Brown. He's one of our expert teachers, lecturers, and he's an expert in the field of surrogate partner therapy and transpersonal sexuality. And we just have a very short interview. This is a very complicated field, so we will try to be as you know, clear as possible with my questions and your answers to give just people, general audience, an idea about what we're doing, why we're doing it, and where we're up to. Okay. Yeah. Um, how, David, just shortly about you, how did you come into this work and how many years are you actually working in this field? And why is it your passion, your vocation? Well, I first entered this particular field of, of sexual work and sexology back in 1991 and through the development of, of that period of time uh, our centre in the UK has been established since 1993. Uh, but I suppose my path into this work predated that in that I used to work with my late wife in uh, work amongst uh, addicts and people that were, we called them street people, and we ran a transpersonal rehabilitation centre for them. And we discovered increasingly that behind addictions, loneliness, uh, problems around isolation, there, there were fundamental sexual issues. All right. And so, um, uh, how has it become our passion? Simply because uh, one uh, door after another over that long period of time opened up and we find we found ourselves in this particular work. Uh, mm. So it's a passion because it's my life. Uh, but it's not sex as such. It's discovering people finding themselves and finding their their higher nature and discovering conscious sexuality. That's the mm. passion. How could you explain shortly, because I know it's a big subject, but what do you exactly mean with conscious sexuality instead of unconscious? Or well, we, we call it uh, the inside out approach to, to sex. We, we identify three types of sex. Uh, the first type being outside in, and that means that many, many people think that if the body, the physical body itself, can be aroused by external images and fantasy, then somehow or other the, the the person, the feelings inside the body will be fulfilled. Sadly, that dysfunctions so often. The second time type of sex is safer, but it's restricted, and that is when people think that sex is, is limited and should only be experienced within monogamy or um, matrimony. Uh, those kind of acceptable environments, uh, but it's still fueled by external images, generally romance and the, the fantasy or dream mm -hmm. of, of happiness mm -hmm. ever the after. Hollywood marriage. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then the third type of sex we identify as being what we call inside out, and that is where intimacy is the gateway. Uh, and real feelings, genuine, authentic feelings, are uh, the first way in, and the body joins in at the appropriate mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So, in intimacy, one is being aware all of the time. That's where consciousness comes in, that, that one is being conscious of feelings and connection, not just trying to stimulate the body itself. Mm -hmm. So actually it starts, your sexual model starts from intimacy, body feelings, emotions, feelings of the mind, into a body experience. Yes. That's and what does that add to our sexual program? What does it help us to realise or to become? Well, I, 
at, at one very attractive level, it means that intimacy and sex is never the same twice. Okay. Uh, whereas most people's sexual experience is that it is a standard format and mm -hmm. can run out of energy and become boring. quite boring yeah. and limiting. But uh, inside out conscious sexuality is never the same twi twice because feelings and energy in the in the what we call the energy body is always in motion and connection between uh, oneself and one's partner at a conscious level means that you're sharing energy with that person too so how how they are feeling how you are feeling that combines into a very very rich sometimes almost volcanic kind of uh, pool of, of energetic feeling. So at, at, at one level, the benefit of inside out, or the difference with inside out sex is it's full of feeling and it's always changing. But more than that, it actually helps one ultimately to discover more about who they really are. Okay. Uh, because you can't uh, explore sexuality in all its depth purely with the objective senses and the objective faculties no. yeah. and so it requires us to open up new faculties in the brain in the mind in the consciousness and that then puts us in touch with the the what we would call the real self the essence who of am our, i really yeah. Yeah, beyond just a mask or uh, an ego who am I really as a human being? Uh, sex and sexuality is a magnificent path in discovering that. Mm. And it's also a very accessible path because many people are into sexuality, are they? It's, a, it's an accessible path to every human being. Uh, and of course so is uh, a spiritual path which also helps us to stay, mm -hmm. uh, to um, discover who we really are. Mm -hmm. But this, a, a, a spiritual path that requires devotion to meditation, to maybe a particular type of teaching, that appeals to some people. And, but they, they can't necessarily access it in their everyday life. Mm -hmm. Sexuality is a spiritual path actually mm -hmm. to self-realization but it's accessible in, in everyday life by people who are in relationships yeah. not just people who want to leave the world and go into a monastery or, mm -hmm. or an ashram. Mm -hmm. Clearly. And how do you see the combination of spiritual growth and sexual development, cultivation. How does that relate in your program, in your ideology? Well, uh, we have a program which is a, a ten-step program where a person can arrive who sexually has perhaps never had a relationship, feels isolated, or he may have had traumatic sexual experiences, he may have um, also, he is also she, of course. Of yeah. course, he yeah. or she. Uh, they may have um, uh, reached a point where they're bereaved of their partner or uh, divorced and have lost confidence in being intimate mm -hmm. beyond that one relationship. They may be fundamentally afraid of um, intimacy. And they may have no spiritual awakening, understanding or history whatsoever. They may be of a very scientific or materialist mind set. But our program, because they want to explore their sexuality, our program which is alchemic really, it's a fusion of, of consciousness and sexuality, one step at a time, it takes them through a reawakening to their sexuality, but by using faculties of higher consciousness. Yeah. 
and they don't need to uh, adopt a particular religious path, they don't need to believe certain doctrines, they just, by their own direct experience, mm -hmm. discover for themselves by taking one step in our program at a time and they they simply move on to the next step when they're comfortable at the previous level of intimacy and there's a boundary at each step of the program so they're experiencing inside out intimacy just to one particular level when they realize how good that is they, they then move on to the next step. Yeah, yeah. When they've lost and gone beyond their anxieties, and they know that they have, then they're ready for the next step. And in that way, they evolve. But what is the last step, in your sense? And where could they ultimately head for? Where could they go? Well, the last step in our, in our sexual recovery program, the 10-step sexual recovery program, uh, the ninth step is lovemaking. Mm -hmm. That's different from sexual intercourse as such. It, it, it's much more about exploring love and making love rather mm. than just the mechanics of yeah, sexual yeah, yeah. intercourse. Technical issues, yeah. Step 10 is closure, where they are ready to replicate what they've experienced in our program outside of therapy. But then beyond that, we are developing our new program, which is for people who are who are awakened at a higher level of consciousness and want to explore s spiritual sexuality or what we call quantum sex. Mm. That's where they start to experience uh, sexuality for the sake of the higher evolution of the, of the human race, uh, where they can understand that when they're making love, they're actually, the couple are actually sending the energy of love into the planet. It's changing the aura mm. of the planet mm -hmm. itself. And where they can, a couple can practice what we call conscious conception, that mm -hmm. is uh, being a channel for souls to come into the, the world mm -hmm. and have an incarnation with a particular mission. Mm -hmm. So beyond the, the current work that we do, the, there are many, many reaches of higher conscious sexuality. Um, where does it end? It never does. No. <laughs> it never does. <laughs> because as soon as we explore the reaches of consciousness that is possible for the human race at this stage of development, it means that we will have evolved into a higher mm -hmm. species yeah. where there are even more ranges of consciousness mm -hmm. so and sexuality too. Uh, ultimately, um, yeah, we're heading for a new type of being. Okay. <laughs> and, and what do you are feeling in about, let's say, 50 years, where we would arrive with our sexual beings? Um, well, in 50 years, um, yeah, I, 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 could I answer your question by saying where will we be in a thousand years? Alright, that's, that's <laughs> fine with me. If you want to make that quantum leap, I'm fine. <laughs> in a thousand years, uh, couples of, of either gender will, of what we call either gender now, will be able to conceive without the use of genitals. Really? Uh, through uh, uh, creative conception by consciousness. Uh, already uh, in tantric sex or quantum sex, we know how attainable it is to have orgasm without ejaculation or without even the genital need, touching. need for oh, yeah. the genitals. Yeah. So that's a foretaste, a forerunner of where the human race is headed and therefore the evolution of the race on the planet. Um, 
will well, how will that influence our biology our bodies our our minds our brains i mean that's a big step which will need to be taken again very much one step at a time by the human race that, that we currently are so in other words if you're asking what will the human form look like in a thousand years time um, uh, I, I, I think I would I'd defer to others on that question. I don't, I don't think it's within our consciousness to be able to perceive that okay. at this stage. Uh, because evolution of consciousness goes in stages. And then, the shocks or... and then there are these gaps, these shocks that are uh, required to take the species out to, uh, and the consciousness out mm -hmm. of a linear path of development mm -hmm. into a, a higher octave, uh, as it were, in vibrational terms. So, so I don't think it's possible for us to visualise where will the, what the human form look like and the human biology in a thousand years' time. What will sex look like on the planet amongst those that are not highly evolved, um, it could well look worse than it currently does. Really? How, uh, how in, it, in all evolution, the, it, evolution can only work along with devolution. Expansion can only work along with out of contraction. Mm -hmm. That's what an orgasm is, isn't it? It's, it's a, a massive expansion of consciousness beyond the contraction mm -hmm. uh, of everything in the organism and it's the same with the development of uh, or the evolution of the human race it's the same with sex we're living in a very pornographic age now yeah. and if, all the time visual stimulation not yeah. uh, kinesthetic yeah. you know touch or not. Uh, yeah. and and if if somebody gives themselves over to being, as it were, captivated by mm -hmm. the energy from pornography, then they go into very, very dark places indeed. I mean, paedophilia and, and all kinds of um, perverse expressions of sex uh, are probably only uh, foretaste of what um, what can be experienced if one gives oneself totally over mm -hmm. to pornography. But of course pornography is real people yeah. acting it out exactly. on the planet. Yeah. And so therefore as pornography gets more and more extreme, there will be that expression on the planet. And the evolution of consciousness means that high awakened consciousness has to live side by side with its polar opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise evolution will stand still. Yeah. So what will sex look like in 50 years time, to come back to your original question, um, publicly probably not much different from what it looks like now except more extreme at both ends. There will be much more uh, spiritual high consciousness sex, sexual relationships. Mm -hmm. Sexual, the models of sexual relationships will be more evolved than purely what they are now. But at the other polar extreme Pornography will be more extreme, and also acting out. The more, will, oh yeah. more violent sex, yeah, yeah. Um, and the two extremes will be living side by side. Okay. How? Because at the one hand, you have, um, I wouldn't say borrowed, but you were inspired by Eastern philosophies and techniques and transcendent knowledge. On the other hand, you have come to a very concrete Western vocabulary and system so that a general audience can come to your centre and feel safe. 
How did you do that? I mean, you didn't stay in a tantric realm, you didn't stay in the esoteric realm, but you really were able to translate it into a Western matter. Well, that's been my my the the book of my life. Uh, Really, it's I, I, I've always um, I've always explored spirituality, universal spirituality. I've always from all the different paths. Uh, I've explored all the different philosophies, uh, so that I could find a way of one truth emerging from all the different cultures and different ways in which people express mm. their philosophies and their spirituality. And I've always made a, a commitment in my teaching or my writing that I would never write anything or teach anything that I've not personally experienced. Mm -hmm. And so my mission, this is my passion, you mentioned that word earlier, my passion is, is to prove by direct experience that what the ancient Eastern Rishis, what the Tantrikas, what the Taoists, what the esoteric Christians, the mystic Sufis, uh, is, is to prove to myself that what they have given to us is one truth and that sexuality is right in the center of that one truth uh, because there's so much negative teaching about sex yeah. as though it, it is a threat to spiritual reality uh, whereas it's actually everything there's nothing I believe that hasn't come about through what we call sex. The scientists talk of the Big Bang. Yeah. I call that a cosmic orgasm. Mm -hmm. the, the, the marriage of perfect masculine and perfect feminine in the source of all, giving birth, giving rise to all manifestation, the universes. It's all through what we as human beings then strive to emulate, that is coming back to the source. Mm -hmm. And so through intimacy, it, true inside out intimacy and sexuality, we seek to go beyond just being a man or being a woman and join with the energy of masculine feminine. That's what so real love making is. the gateway to oneness. The gateway to oneness, absolutely. All, all great masters have always said when the two become one, then you enter the kingdom of God. And that's my, my way of explaining the centrality of sexuality and sex in human experience. We're all finding our way back to the one. So we should acknowledge despite that we have been influenced by Christian religion or Muslim religion or whatever religion because it's not one religion but very dogmatically we should acknowledge again that sex is at the core of you know the existence cosmic existence and we are part of course of this cosmos and absolutely you, you see one of the hidden keys to uh, understand manifestation is what is called sometimes the law of three. Uh, the problem with us in our world is, is that people think that uh, manifestation works on two opposites. And that's why wars come about and the polarization of the genders. It's either black or white, heaven or hell, east or west, man or woman, and it's all like polarization. But manifestation really works when you see there's always a third force, bringing, bringing the opposites together. That's where 
reality is to be found. And, and if we think of um, the role of sex in life as that of the apex of a, of a triangle, then you find what I would call the first force at one side of the triangle, the second force seeming to work energetically in opposition to each other. But what brings it, what brings those two wonderful forces mm -hmm. together? The third force, and in human experience, that is sexuality. Oh, yeah. And if you can take that image of the triangle, what does it do? It then gives birth either to new energy or even new energy in the form of a baby. Uh, it's, it's central to everything. Nothing has come about except through that, those three forces working together. And the human, the human experience of that is what we call sex. Beautiful. If we go back now to your daily practice, working with clients, you're not only bringing their sexual restoration or, or sexual happiness or sexual realization, you also bring them further than that, actually, with your therapy. Experience life more intensely, more consciously. Yes. What's your program doing then? Well, uh, I, I would always say to a client who arrives uh, initially, they, they, they present to us because they've hit some problem sexually, a uh, sexual dysfunction or, or trauma of some kind in their relationship. And I would always, after explaining our program, say to them, of course, this won't only help you in the bedroom, but in every other area of your life as well. Because by them opening, awakening new faculties, new pathways in their brain, uh, and helping them to experience uh, the, the internal feelings rather than the external distractions, they are literally expanding their horizon, they're, they're expanding their consciousness and by doing so they will see themselves differently, see other people differently, see the world differently. It will help them to make different choices in their career, in their relationships. It will get them unstuck from recurring problems and issues, just, destructive yeah. relationships. So yes, sex is once again central in, in helping us to expand our whole personal universe really. Yeah. So your message would be that we all have to get sex positive again. Or uh, aware uh, or how do you Well um, it no I, I would be more inclined to say it, it's not it's not how much sex you have which or who you're having sex with, it's more about what type of sex are you having. Yeah. So Yes, I agree with you, um, but I wouldn't be saying get positive about the type of sex that most people are having. Mm -hmm. That was what led to sexual liberation in the, the 60s. 60s. Yeah. Uh, just let's have more sex. No, let's have a new type of sex. Quality sex. That would be my message. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very you welcome. Saying. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Oh, mm -hmm.